name is Caroline, I'm founder of Recotopia. We're here today talking feet. There are many diseases of the feet, uh, several of which we've come across recently. We've had ring bone, pediosteitis, and navicular. Each horse is individual. They're gonna have specific and very individual responses to any treatment for disease. But interestingly enough, what we did find uh, with all three horses, there was a particular uh, situation that actually had a dramatic improvement for all of them. And it was a shoe called a sneaker. We reached out to Kirk Atkins, founder of Equithotics and the inventor of sneakers, and Dr. Sue Stover, a professor of veterinary anatomy and director of the J.D. Wheat Veterinary Orthopedic Research Laboratory at UC Davis to find out more about the biomechanics of the sneaker and why they help our horses. And we are here not only to share the information that we found, but also to share the story of Sela, a rescue mare who came to us with multiple issues in her feet. The first time I met Sayla, she had been living in the Northern California hills, basically wild and neglected for over three years. The man that owned her bought her on Craigslist. His intention was to breed horses, and yet he didn't even own a halter. She was basically living in the wild when in August of 2014, Sayla was attacked by a stray pit bull. The dog took a giant chunk out of the muscle above her elbow. I think the owner knew I was a sucker because he texted me a picture of the wound and asked if I was interested in buying the mare. I showed up the next day and was horrified at the amount of flies living in the wound. So she went home with me. Healing the wound was the easy part. The hard part was the constant unsoundness. After nerve blocks, x-rays, and even an MRI at UC Davis, it was determined Sela had navicular syndrome. I noticed concussion played a really big part in her unsoundness. A few times, Sailor reared up in turnout and came up literally non-weight-bearing lame, leading to her second diagnosis, low-grade laminitis. She also has side bone, chronic effusion in the coffin joint, possible pedal osteitis, degenerative joint disease, and thin soles. So basically, she has one of everything. I tried stall rest, hand walking, shoes, shoes with wedge pads, plastic shoes, barefoot, bringing the toe back, barefoot with various types of boots and pads, dental impression material, and hoof casts. Sayla's hay has been tested and her minerals have been balanced. We've tested for Cushing's and insulin resistance. We've done pharmaceuticals such as Prevacox, Adequan, Legend, and Osphos, and nutraceuticals, Devil's Claw, Yucca, Flaxseed, MSM, Chinese Herbs, Oral HA, Glucosamine, and Chondroitin. And although everything seemed to help maybe a little bit, it's been almost two years since she was rescued. And no matter what I do, she seems like she remains at a constant grade two lameness. But one of my vets suggested I try sneakers. After reading the report from the veterinarians on the x-rays and looking at the x-rays, um, there is a kind of like a kitchen sink group of problems that are associated with this horse. What I see on the x-rays is mild changes of degenerative joint disease on the pastern joint. So for that, we want to reduce the breakover pressure. We'll do that, and that will also help the other problem, which is navicular changes. We show mild changes to the navicular and some of the enlarged vascular channels in the distal border of the navicular bone indicate chronic inflammation. The thing that encourages me about this horse is that the flexor border still looks good and that we still have good architecture of the navicular bone showing a clear definition between the cortex and medulla and no big uh, lesions and stuff in the surface. The one thing that we have that is really kind of bothersome and it shows long-term inflammatory process is the pedal osteitis. That's a degradation of the, of the coffin bone and it's around the solar margin we can see lucencies and, and what that is is wherever it shows up dark that means that there's less bone. These feet are generally showing chronic long-term pressure on the sole, inflammatory reaction to that pressure, and bone remodeling and resorption. We can see the remodeling down here where we have what we call a ski tip on the end of the coffin bone where actually the pressure from the ground has caused the bone to remodel and pull back away from the ground and actually has formed a little kind of lip on the end. The last feature is side bone and this is a very small side bone. It's not really, I think, you know, a problem, but nevertheless, side bone is um, exacerbated by concussion. Pedal osteitis, side bones, ring bone, laminitis, they're all uh, 
exacerbated by vibration and this this tread helps to modify or eliminate that vibration and, and make these horses so much more comfortable. The breakover pressure is huge. This is uh, one of the biggest things that we can do with the sneaker that is overlooked is that we can modify the toe and bring that breakover back and to reduce the pressure on there. What I have is I've beveled this back corner here to help with the roll into landing and then on the front this is the breakover. So the way it works is that as the horse's foot comes to the ground, it comes down heel first. This roll softens that landing and it rolls in nicely rather than being in a square corner that will kind of catch and snap it down. The next phase is during the load bearing phase, the heel will not sink down because we have a nice bar here that has lots of surface area. Sneakers are based upon a wide web aluminum bar shoe. The bar shoe provides the support to the tendons and ligaments and increases the surface area to prevent the extra dorsiflexion or the sinking of the heel into the ground, creating extra pressure. That's gonna be harder than the navicular and the joints. As the load bearing phase moves into the, the breakover phase, because of the bevel of the shoe that I put on here, it, as soon as the horse's weight shifts from load bearing to start to lift forward, it's easy to get it off the ground. I wanna illustrate how the forces between the ground and the hoof affect the coffin, pastern, and fetlock joints. And essentially, when force is transmitted from the ground to the hoof, if we look, for example, at the coffin joint in the center of rotation, because it's on this lever arm, like a lever, it's going to want to dorsiflex or hyperextend the coffin joint. So we can see that the forces that cause extension of these joints or the torque that causes rotation of these joints is related to two things. The magnitude of the force and the distance of this lever arm. So I'm just going to call that T for torque which causes joint rotation is equal to force times this distance. We noted with the extended shoe, we decrease the lever arm distance. And if we can reduce the amount that those extend with each interaction with the ground, we reduce the strains on the tendons and ligaments that support those structures. With cushion added to the bottom of the foot, what we're doing is we're decreasing the peak force on the limb. So if we have an extended heel and cushion, we're decreasing the forces that cause joint overextension, and that's gonna keep the horse more comfortable and reduce the risk of injury with repetitive motions. So there's a lot of features that are built into the shoe that will address a lot of the different things that are gonna be, we're gonna be doing on Sailor. Actually, the foot has plenty of length and it just looks like it's in need of a little bit of a trim. It, it's a pretty well concave foot. Yeah, I'm gonna use the hoof testers just to see if I can pick up any focal sensitivities in the areas or just get an idea of how sensitive she is. And I'm squeezing as hard as I can with this hoof testers and I'm not getting any real responses. Normally, Sela is very reactive to hoof testers, especially in winter when her feet are soft. But right now it's summer and her feet are very hard. I'm going to go ahead and trim this foot and see what kind of conditions I find after I get rid of the excess length of wall and sole that is on the foot. White line actually, I'm, with this little nipper pass that I can hear, I see that it's nice and clean. We have a little bit of separation right here because that's commonly where you're going to find it. I'm not going to take any more of the natural sole out. The frog's a little flattened from living in soft boots, but I don't see any problem there. In the scheme of things, there's plenty of hoof wall here, so all good. This is a size two front. It's important to clean the clip so that you get the best fit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the shoe with the clips in the position that I would want them to be in. You can mark it if you want right here. Take a small section of the hoof wall out and set the clips into the wall. So since this mare is a little sensitive, she'll probably want fewer nails. So this way if I use the clips that I can go to a minimum amount of nails, four or five even. These came out pretty much in the right spot that we want. Mark the heel area. So at this point, 
shaping the shoe now is just done by removing the extra that we don't need. You want to cut outside the line and then work your way back towards the, the line depending upon how much support you want to leave. The rough shaping is finished. So now we're going to take it to the grinder and do the final beveling and shaping. So the thing is is that a lot of people were saying, well, you can't put breakover into sneakers. <laughs> yeah, you can, <laughs> exactly. So now that the shoe is pretty well shaped, I'm going to check the final fit, make the final adjustments to the sides and to the heel, and then I'm going to mark my nail holes and drill that and we'll be ready to nail the shoe on. So the thickness of the wall from here to here is transferred from here to there. That way when I drill this hole it will enter the white line right there. The positioning of the nail holes is critical and it's easily done. That's an important thing. That's why I designed my shoe without nail holes. <laughs> so you had to do it right. We start the nail and then we pitch it Nailing is nailing, really. So once the shoe is shaped and positioned with the clips, we just nail it on and finish as we would normally and see how things go after it's on. Five good nails and two good toe clips. So now we clinch it. We're just gonna feather this edge back in closer to the foot. We can do that easily with the rasp. Just smooth it all up, make a nice tight final fit. Kirk did Sayla's right foot and then we took her into the arena to see if she had any reaction to the sneakers. At first she started out with her typical head bob but as she got used to the shoes she started to drop her head and relax. Kirk suggested I talk to my vet about using an anti-inflammatory for 10 days to break the cycle of inflammation and then hopefully the biomechanics of the shoes breakover will help her not re-inflame the soft tissues in her feet. It's now been 31 days since Sayla got her sneakers. She still starts out with a little head bob, but the difference I see is that she's working out of it. Before she'd sometimes look better, but I would usually trot only a tiny bit and then stop. Now I feel like she gets better with work. She drops her head down, relaxes, and moves more. It's now been five and a half months since Sayla got her sneakers. And I have to admit, she still has good days and bad days. But where she's at now, she's more willing to move on. She seems overall much more comfortable. She seems like a happier horse. Another difference is that when it was cold and damp out like it is today, it is now the dead of winter, it's January, she looked much worse. The weather really affected her and it still does affect her. She comes out stiff, but just not as much. She works out quicker. I realize Sayla isn't 100% sound yet. She's not tracking up and back. She still needs body work, but she's getting better, not worse. I see her getting more and more comfortable. So many people helped me with Sayla, and we did so much incrementally and so many different things, but I'm very convinced that the thing we did that helped the most was the sneakers. The biomechanics built into sneakers is what helped her reduce her chronic inflammation. So I'm not saying to you, don't try the things that we tried. I think everything has helped a little bit, but the thing that helped a lot, the thing that really helped this mare turn the corner was sneakers. So thank you, Kirk, and thank you, sneakers. <laughs>